on board? I am on. All right. Joy, just a few things before we start asking you any questions, okay? You are here represented by your attorney, and we understand that, okay? The um, reason I'm saying that is I want it on the tape, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, you're not the target of an investigation, okay? We're not here to get you in any trouble. You're not in any trouble with us. You're not under arrest for anything. You're, no matter what you tell us, you're not going to be in trouble. Mm -hmm. And while we're on the record here, too, um, I did speak with uh, Ken Kratz about that. And um, a condition that we spoke of was that in, in terms of what could possibly happen to you, Jody, as a result of this, is that he was willing to grant complete immunity, whether use immunity or transactional immunity. And you and I spoke about this before we went on the tape here, but just to let you clear, what these fellows are telling you is exactly true. Okay. Even if you say something today that would in some way incriminate you for some offense that may have occurred in the past or is occurring now, um, you will not be prosecuted for that. Okay. And in the event that that would happen, then your statement could not be used. Okay. They, they promised not to prosecute. So please, for my sake as well as theirs, Make sure that you tell them everything, uh, and, and everything you say needs to be true. Okay. Um, it's a condition of that agreement that you must provide truthful information, not just what you think they want to hear. Okay. Okay. Do you have any questions of me before we go ahead? Not yet. Okay. Well, if you do as we go along, you just let me know. Okay. okay. And I'll just reiterate that it has got to be the truth, okay? Because I know we've we've talked several times before, Jody, and, and I know some of the things you told me eh, weren't exactly the truth, or a different version of the truth, if you will. Or not everything. So, and, I mean, you have left some things out. No. So that's what we're here for today, okay? And I'm going to kind of turn it over to Tom now. I'll probably interject here and there, but um, Tom's got a bunch of questions that we'd, we'd like to run by you, okay? okay. Yeah, and, and to reiterate or add to that, now is the time. No better time to tell everything because you got nothing to lose. Okay. Uh, the last time, and like I said, it's not that I'm going to ask the questions all the time. Mark will ask some, and I'll ask some. But um, I'd like to start out with what we talked about last time in that you made comments. You've made comments numerous times uh, to Stephen, to Chucky, to whoever, usually over the phone, that you basically could fuck Stephen yeah. big time. I mean, and I've got a report here that has the, the transcript type stuff in it, but I don't think I need to even show you that. We'd like you to elaborate on that if you could, please. Well, I knew the phone conversations were being recorded, and I was sick of him hurting me. I wanted him to worry that I'd hurt him. <clears throat> when, we, when we briefly talked the last time, you had said, and I, and you, I had said to you that, you know, you had made the comment that you could bury him. And I said to, said to you that, you know, you know a lot more than you're telling us. And you kind of laughed and grinned and said, yeah, I do. Just so The only things I know is how our relationship was. I don't know anything about the case or anything because I wasn't around. Well, tell us those things then. I mean, I, you know, talk about your relationship and, and what it was like. It wasn't bad. It was a normal relationship. We had our ups and downs, and he treated me good. <clears throat> we argued. He had a temper. He'd go in the garage and work on cars or break something if he got mad at me. And well, you kind of told me the last time about the prior abuse. Mm -hmm. was the one time especially when he choked you until you passed out. Mm -hmm. And one of my follow-up questions to that was, did he ever threaten to kill you? And you said... You smiled again and said, I don't I, want to ask that until my attorney's present. Yeah. Did he ever threaten yeah. to kill you? No, he didn't. Is that the truth? Yes, it is. Well, why wouldn't you tell me that the last time? I don't know. Because I want my lawyer present. I don't know. You want your lawyer I present just... so you could tell us that he never threatened to kill you? Does that make sense to you? None of this makes sense to me. I don't, you know, I just want to be left out of it. And we're doing our best to do that. But we have information through phone calls, through people you've told, um, through places where I'm not going to tell you how I know, that you have information that could help this case, that could help put, I'll be honest with you, help put Steve away, okay, for killing somebody, for killing somebody, some innocent woman. I don't see how I would have information about that, though. 
I don't know. That's what we're here to find out. We were told by a very good source that we needed to talk to you, that you had important information, not necessarily on our case with Stephen, but even your relationship with Stephen, how he treated you, what he did to you, uh, stuff like that. You, you mentioned he had a temper. You've mentioned that the last time we were here, the, the one occasion where he, he strangled you till you passed out and then you came to and he's dragging you out of the, the house. Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got information that he, he also hit you on other occasions and, and battered you on other occasions. I'm using the battered word freely here. That doesn't mean that he beat you senseless, yeah. <laughs> but uh, domestic battery type instances. We'd like to know those instances more about that stuff. We've got children going to their mother saying, Mom, could you help Jody because Stephen hurts her so much or beats on her so much. Really? Tend to, I tend to believe children going to their mother asking them or mother to help you. I mean, how often did you get hit by Stephen? The times I told you about up north and when I was ripping his shirt whenever I found out about him sleeping with Marie. How did you find out about him sleeping with Marie? He told me. And I sort of had a feeling because she'd call him every day before school, after school, during school. He'd and go and meet her in the parks, wherever. Just for the record, who is Marie? Earl's daughter, his Would niece. Should be his niece. Yeah. And she, I found notes that she wrote him saying that she can't wait to be with him and she loves him and wants to marry him. And Let's go back to the question I asked you before. Like I said, you need to be honest with me here because I don't see any reason in the world that you wouldn't answer a question without an attorney like I asked you if it was not true. He never threatened me. Who did he threaten? Who did he threaten to kill? I don't know. I can't really say for sure. What do you think? I'm asking your opinion. From what I heard from my girlfriend, okay. is that he threatened my mom. Threatened your mom. But I don't know how true that is because my mom's never said anything to me. Why would he threaten your mom? Because she was going to testify against me in court for my drunk driving. So how would he have done that over the phone or in person? I have no idea. I guess. What exactly did your girlfriend tell you? Oh God, I don't even remember. Uh, when you say girlfriend, who is that? Michelle. Last name? Mueller. M U E L L E R. I don't even remember what she said. He said to her. Well, it had to be something about killing her, I'm assuming. I, I don't at, remember. I can... What's your mom's name? Sandy Barth. Where does she live? Mantuak. Is she in the phone book? Uh, yeah. Do you have her phone number? Yeah. What is that? 920 mm -hmm. 682 -2623. So you want me to ask specific questions then? Okay, it doesn't matter. Okay. When's the last time you spoke with Stephen? Whenever the snow contact was put on. When's the last time he spoke to you? Whenever the snow contact was... Oh no, I can't say that. That He tried calling my cell phone. When? The last time you guys were here. The same day. That same day? Yep. He tried calling your cell phone. Yep. Okay, tell me about that. I was getting ready for work. My phone rang. I answered it, and it says you have a collect call. And it was him on the other end saying, "Will you marry me soon?" And I hung up. Did you? What'd you do after that? Amy? I called my probation officer. You gonna marry him? <laughs> no. I was planning on leaving him. After I got out of jail. You were? Yeah. I was just trying to get all my shit out of there and get the car from him or the truck. Saw the phone calls back and forth. That was just nothing? Yeah. Where you're telling him you love him and mm -hmm. you need him and all that stuff. I don't need him. All he ever did was bring me down. 
And how, how did he bring you down? In what way did he bring you down? It's always just cutting me down, making me feel like shit. Tell me I'm no good, I don't do nothing. And do you think that's part of his controlling nature? Oh, yeah. He's very controlling. I couldn't even call my mom or talk to my girlfriend of 18 mm -hmm. years. Stephen telling you that you are to live with Ma until this is all over. <laughs> kind of a controlling oh, thing, yeah. right? Wanted you where he could control yeah. you. Same thing with the pastor, I yeah. imagine, in my opinion. Stephen tells you he loves you and he wants you to obey. I never heard that, but okay, I believe it. You probably just don't remember it because it's basically verbatim right from a conversation Is you it? guys had. Oh, yeah. Uh, maybe I don't remember it. Well, there are a lot of conversations, <laughs> Joey. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to read you some comments. If you want to ask some questions, sure. you can. Um, I also have some of the letters that his other girlfriend sent him. I don't know if you're interested in looking at any of that. I really don't, don't care. care. Okay. Um, we talked again the day you got out of jail. We talked about <clears throat> some of the sex stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I know for a fact you were not completely honest with me about some of that um, because you told your probation agent one thing and then you told me another thing. Okay. I don't remember what I told her. Okay, we well, we were talking basically about um, how many mm -hmm. times a day that you would have sex. Mm -hmm. And I forgot what you told me. Tell In me the again. beginning, five or six times a day. Okay. What you told your PO was that um, obviously you'd get sore after a while. And what you told your PO was that when you would say that to Steve, it seemed to turn him on. He wanted it more. That's what you told her. I never said that to her. That's what she tells me. She I, said the more it hurt, you said the more it hurt, the more it seemed to turn him on. I never said that to her. She should be doing a report on that. That's where we get potentially have problems if you have to go to court and testify and you say stuff like that and someone else comes in and says, well, no, she said this. I don't, I don't think I ever talked about sex with him to her. Where the hell would she get that then? I don't we didn't know. tell her anything about sex. And she brought it up if, to us. If I was sore and I tell him to stop, he'd stop. I don't know. I don't see any reason the probation officer would lie to us, Joey. I'm, I'm, I don't remember ever saying that to her. So is that true or is that not true? It's not true. Okay. We also learned from people that when you were in jail, that when uh, Steve would pick you up to go to your AODA classes, that sometimes you guys would stop off and have sex into or to or from. Never yeah. happened. Never happened. No, nope. he wanted to get me straight there and straight back so I wouldn't get in trouble. And it's not like I had a lot of time in between <clears throat> going well, there. I understand that. Hey guys, can we take the break just for a second? Sure. Just for a second? Certainly. Absolutely. Back on. The record. Um, I'm going to go over a few more things that we talked about previously here, okay? Joey, it's pretty evident that you're not telling us the whole truth about everything you know, okay? I mean, from what people have told me, with people that have no reason to lie, okay? We've been told by a very reliable source that you have information that can help this case. I told you that earlier. Yeah. Okay. And that's what we're looking for. I can sit here and fish all day and waste your time, waste your attorney's time, waste our time. If there's something that we need to know, come out and say it. I, just, I don't have anything, though, that's, that would help this case. you got to keep in mind, you know, Steve is not your friend. He's not no, your boyfriend. I know this guy not. killed somebody. I don't know what proof I need to show you or what proof you'd like to see, what evidence you'd like to see for me to prove that to you. And I will show it to you. I don't care what you want to see, I'll show it to you. I'll show you every anything. laboratory report. I'll show you her bones. Anything you want to see to convince you what this guy did to her. I know he's done more to you. I believe that he threatened to kill you and you don't want to say it for whatever reason. He's never threatened me. What other kind of information can you tell me that can help me that you've been telling people about? I don't know what I've been telling people. Well, let's go over a few more questions that we have here. Just that he's an asshole. And There's things that are called other acts. 
that can sometimes be used in court. And that's what we're kind of talking about here. You know, we're not saying you have direct knowledge of his, his act against Teresa, but there's other acts that he may have said or done to you that may relate to this case that the court may allow to use in the case in chief against him. For example, strangling you, uh, hitting you, beating you, saying things to you, threatening you, stuff like that, if it happened, can be, can be pretty good information or pretty good evidence uh, as it relates to what he did. Mm -hmm. I could see the court probably allowing that type of, of information because it directly relates to, the, you know, or somewhat directly mm. relates to the act. So that's, you know, that kind of stuff, I guess, if, if you're wondering what we're looking at, is, is probably more that kind of stuff. You know, and, and, and you said, you know, you told us about the strangling incident, getting hit up north, getting hit when you, the Marie thing. Yeah. When you got hit up north, what was that? What did he do? Slap me. Slapped you in the face? Yeah. Just once, twice? Yeah, just once. Just there was once. a bug on my face. Because there was a bug on your face. Yeah. So he said I didn't see it. I don't think anybody else did because we were... Were you guys having an argument? He was mad because I was drinking. Oh. So, do you believe there's a bug on your face? I don't know. I, I'm not going to sit here and play this game, right. Joey. Okay? You know, if that's what... You know if there's a bug on your face, what it's like if somebody's going to slap a bug off your face, okay? And you know the difference between a bug slap and somebody hauling off and whacking you across it, the face. He didn't haul off and whack me. Okay, he no. slapped me, just slapped. Didn't leave a mark From or nothing. From my recollection of one of our interviews with you, you got into a little more detail than just a slap up north. There was an incident with him up north. He was mad because you were drinking with his dad. Mm -hmm. And there was a little more than a slap that went on that day, from what I recall. But never we were arguing, and he slapped me in. Me being the bitch I was when I was drinking, fell and made him feel bad. He didn't hit me. He didn't leave a mark. I don't remember if he left a mark. I don't know. It was so, so long ago. The Jody thing. What did he do that time? Or the, the Marie thing? I told him to get the hell out. You know, you're a sick fucker sleeping with your own niece. And I started throwing his clothes out of the dryer and out the back door and. I came across a shirt she bombed, so I started ripping it, and he went to grab it, and I was pulling it, and his hand slipped and caught me in the chin. We're, in the previous interviews, when you talked about these things, there was never mention about a bug. There was never mention about a slip. It was more in the heat of the moment he hit you. Now we've got this. Were you try, were you lying then, trying no. to protect him, or, or I not might have been trying him, to protect or, him. I don't know. Or are you it's, trying to protect him now? Or? No. I could care less if he fries in hell. Well, this is direct opposite of what he told us earlier. That's that's the problem we're having here. I mean, what do we believe from you? <clears throat> what I'm telling you now. And that's what you've told me every time. I know. Well, <laughs> I don't I understand don't it, Joey. I don't understand why you're protecting him. I I'm don't not understand trying that. to anymore. Um, has obviously, past, somebody has gotten has to you. Has the pastor Nobody's talked to you about to this? No. Since we talked to you, did you tell her that we came and talked to you Wednesday, last Wednesday? Yeah. What did she say about that? I'll pray for you. Did she say anything about that the, the only the Lord can judge and that you shouldn't talk about this stuff? And the, the, no. the people on earth can't judge? No. She says that a lot. I don't know she says it to you, but she yeah, says she, it a lot. She's never, I never heard her say the judge, or the Lord judges or whatever. Yeah, the, 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 the only the I, Lord can she, judge people. Hmm. All right. Go ahead. I just want to read you a couple things uh, uh, from phone calls and stuff. You're talking to Barb and uh, talking about testifying against Stephen and he said you'd marry Stephen, so he, you know, he said you wouldn't have to testify against him. As it relates to the marriage thing, um, there were some things talked about marriage and an annulment. Yeah, I'll marry you and then we'll get an annulment. Whose idea was that? To marry and get an annulment? I believe I said that once a long time ago. Okay. So that wasn't Stephen's idea, that to marry and get an annulment after? So you wouldn't have to testify and stuff? No, that was my idea. Okay. <clears throat> um, 
Barb talks to you and says, uh, you, know, you wouldn't have to say anything bad. And then you said, well, you knew, you knew, but uh, then you'd be in jail for perjury. And Barb says, well, why? And you said, because I'm not a good liar. Now, Barb says, you don't have to say anything bad against Steve. And he says, well, then I'd be lying. Well, what are these bad things? I guess that's what we're, you know, we see this kind of stuff and we're, we're wondering what, what, what's, what you're talking about. I don't know. I don't remember that phone conversation. <clears throat> um, Stephen tells you that you got to keep your mouth shut. Uh, you said you told him only the good shit. Went back to the letters again. Um, uh, Jody said you told them, the cops, that Stephen never laid a hand on you. <laughs> Excuse me. Jody said she told them, this is the cops again, that Stephen slapped her once or twice after she was drinking. And then Stephen tells you you shouldn't have even done that. And you said, I realized that afterwards. Stephen, again, he tells you this many times. I'm looking at a life bit here. Uh, Stephen tells you you're going to have to testify. And he said, no, I won't because I'll marry you. But Stephen. that wouldn't stop me from testifying anyways, would it? No. I don't no. think so. Stephen said it isn't Obviously about love. Obviously so at one point. No, I knew it wasn't. It's Did a murder. Are you appeasing him or what? Yeah. What's well, got nothing to do with the being a murderer? It's just, it's just sick that you of arguing then. then. So I'd tell him whatever he wanted to hear. Until um, I could get out of his mom's house. He says it's not about love, it's about nailing his ass to the wall. You're not to talk to them at all. He orders you. <clears throat> orders you to stay away from Chucky. He's not very happy that Chucky came to visit you either. Bad, good. This wouldn't be happening if I wasn't in here. Comment, you're upset about that. Look, it's just like none of this would have happened if I wasn't in there. Let's go back to that comment. Remember, we talked about mm -hmm. that some time ago, and I played you that, mm -hmm. where he says none of this would have happened if you weren't in there. What do you think he meant by that? Your opinion? It's my opinion? He's blaming it on me that he did it. It's my fault. Why? I don't know. Everything was always my fault. What would make it your fault because you're in jail for him to kill somebody? I don't know how. To tell me, what do you think? Because <laughs> I wasn't there? I don't know. I, I don't know what goes on in his head. I don't know. Hmm. Stephen again says he's worried about facing a life bit. Um... Jody said, uh, you said they knew about Stephen hitting you up north. Stephen asked you why you just don't deny everything, and you said because uh, if, you, if you cared for him, why you don't deny everything if you cared for him, and you said, um, he says that you could just say you were drunk and fell down and got the bruises, and then you said, I'm not a good liar. Why should I say I fell when I was drinking and got bruises. When exactly. I, when I wasn't drinking. The reason I'm reading this is because here, I mean, it's it's vintage Stephen. He's telling you to basically lie. Yeah. Lie for him, and that's what concerns us now. Are you doing that now? No, Are you I'm not. Not, not lying necessarily, but not telling us everything. No. <clears throat> Let's talk about a few other things. There's obviously some things from the case that we think we're missing. Some pieces of evidence possibly. If he were to hide something, let's say a knife, for example, where do you think that would be? Where do you think he'd hide stuff? I have no idea. You were with him long enough. I mean, if he was going to hide I, something. I've never seen him hide anything. To my knowledge. Because you didn't find it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Try up north. I have no idea. What about the handcuffs? <clears throat> um, you had talked one time about being tied up mm -hmm. and things by Steve. Tell me about that. 
I don't remember. It's when we first started going out. He tied me up. It was... What did he tie you up with? Good question. I don't remember. Rope? I don't remember. I wasn't so the one tied up. It was two years ago. I don't remember. I think well, it was... Let me just put it... Let me put it this way. If rope. I got tied up two years ago, if it was playing, you if remember, it was... I, I think I'd remember. You I remember it on the telephone. Rope, I think. That plain white rope. Okay. And where did he tie you up? On our bed. My Explain bed. Explain to me how he did that. Well, it was whatever kind of bed that is. Like spindles and stuff? Uh, with the headboard, That's, you mean? Yeah. Okay. And uh, where the balls are. Okay. And then my feet on the bottom. So, for lack of a better word, kind of like spread eagle with your yeah. arms back? Yeah. Okay. And that was using rope? Mm hmm and did he do that with your permission or mm -hmm. okay did he ever use any handcuffs or anything like that mm -hmm. did he have any handcuffs mm -hmm. at that time ever borrow barb's handcuffs or anything mm -hmm. like that so he just did it with rope mm -hmm. and that and the reason for that was try something new okay did he let you go as soon as you asked him to or oh yeah i could slip my hands out of it it wasn't tight at all okay so you're Feet were tied by the ankles, one to each bedpost, and your arms to one to each bedpost. Mm -hmm. If I show you a picture of the bed, you can just kind of point that out to me so we're yeah, talking about the same thing. Here's a picture kind of at the top of the bed. Does that look yep. familiar? Yep. So by each spindle on each side? And then down at the footboard. That's not on there. Okay. As long as I got the picture out, <clears throat> got a couple other ones we'll show you two later. But as long as I got this one out, is this the skirt you were looking for? Yep. Okay, I'll try to get that back to you. Okay. And black uh, suede gloves that tie. The, um, we probably have those too. Yes. And my comforter. That I don't know if I'll be able to return right away. Mm -hmm. But uh, gloves, I would think, and the skirt, I, I think we can. Where were the gloves? Do you remember where you kept them? Enough? I think they were... When I left to go to jail, they were on the desk in the bedroom. I, he the, rearranged, so I don't know. That's interesting. He rearranged. Where was the bed prior to you going to jail? It wasn't here, was it? No, it was over here against the wall under the window. Under the window? Yeah. It was over against the wall under the window. So basically, it would be turned, the door's over here, right? Yeah. And it would be against this wall over here? Yeah. Okay, underneath the window. Okay. Yeah. Whose guns are in those racks? Rollies. Rollies. Um, you ever see Steve target shooting or anything? I mean, we ever both used the one gun. Okay, which one was that? Do you remember? Twenty-two. Okay, so you both used the twenty-two. Oh yeah. Just target shooting, or shoots of rabbits, or something, or just target shooting. Okay. Where? I always shot at the burning barrel. Which burning barrel? The one that was out by the cornfield. In His front of the house. Barrel? Yeah. Okay. From where did you shoot? The back door. The deck by the pool? No, uh, back by the back bedroom. By that door, okay. And did you ever shoot out of the garage? I didn't. Him and the boys used to. Or in the backyard out the patio door. Which gun would Steve shoot? The 22. 22. Just so I'm clear on where the bed was prior to. That was over by the window, mm -hmm. and that was like that until you went to jail? Yep. And when you got back out of jail, then it was over here? <clears throat> When I got out of jail, it was gone. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> but when I went home to get clothes, yeah, that's where it was. Because you did go home to get you did go home and yeah. there to get clothes. Then it was moved. Yeah. Okay. Just so I'm clear on that. Did you shoot him? See him shoot any other guns or just the twenty two? Just the twenty two. So you never went up north with him when he went deer hunting and stuff like that. No, I was in jail. When did you start dating him? Nine months after he got out of prison. So you were in jail for the first deer hunting season, or the only mm -hmm. deer hunting season that you would have been together? Yep. Okay. Let's talk about mm -hmm. Teresa a little bit. Did you ever hear him talk about her? Because he had met her several times prior to... Just the one time she came down to take a picture of a boat trailer, I believe it was. Were you home a, that day? Yeah. Did you talk to her? Nope. We talked to her. 
He did. Was that like on a weekend or during the week? Oh. Well, I think did he it was, have, go ahead. I think it was during the week because he was up at the shop. Okay. But he was even up there after hours and on weekends, so I couldn't really be. So how did they? How did he set that up? Did he have a certain time he met Teresa or what? I believe so. He told me that he'd be home. Oh God, I don't even remember. I think he told me he'd be home because she was going to come and take a picture of the boat trailer and the motor. I paid no attention. I took a shower. Okay. Or I was going to take a... I don't remember. I was walking down the hallway. I seen her come up, take a picture. I was walking back through the hallway. I seen him paying her and she left right away. Where was he paying her that time? Right where the van would have been. So outside? Yep. Okay. Did he mention her by name? He might have, but I just never paid attention. Did he ever say anything after he met her, like, she's cute, I like her, maybe we could have a threesome, anything on that order? Nope. Never mentioned her? No. Then how do you know it was Teresa? Well, I just figured it was her seeing I heard she was out there so many times. Okay. How many times was she out there? I couldn't even answer that. I figured it was every time he tried selling something. I don't know. We heard I that just, she was out there yeah. so many times. I don't know who told me she was out there or if I read it in the paper that she was out there a couple of times. Oh, a couple of times? Is, you mean it sound like it's a lot oh, of no, times, no. like 20, 30 times no. or something. No, okay. Not about what I you read in the paper, your personal knowledge. How many times do you know she was out there? How many times did you see this woman out there? I only seen her that once. Okay. Do you remember what she was driving that time? I didn't even pay attention. Looking back on it now, obviously seeing Teresa's picture on the news, in the paper, or whatever, do you believe that was the same person? I couldn't answer that because I didn't have my glasses. Okay. And I can't really see that far. I know she had dark hair. Okay. And she was skinny. I asked you this times and times ago. We talked about types of jeans that you might have wore. Did you ever own a pair of Daisy Fuentes no. jeans? No. Nope. Okay. Did you ever? Not to my knowledge. Okay. Well, if you did, you'd know, but it's yeah. not just a normal type of jean, I would think. Do you ever burn jeans anywhere on that property for any oh, reason? Yeah. Where? In the burning barrel and in the burning pit. Okay. I but burn jeans, shirts, bras, underwear. What kind of jeans would you have burned? I couldn't even tell you the. Normally, what would they have been? What did you usually buy? Guess. Uh, Levi's. Faded Glory. Okay. But never Daisy Fun Daisy no. Orange. Okay. Where is Steve's camera? My camera? It's right there. Steve says it's his camera. No, he gave it to me. Okay. We like to take that along with us. Is that okay with you? Yeah. Okay. I was told I shouldn't give it to you without a warrant, but. Well, we're asking your permission know, to take I it. Know. And you um, asked me a while ago, and I told you you could have it. If you want me to get a warrant, I'll do that. You know, that's up to you. Um, it's your call. I, is it your camera? He gave it to me. Well, then mm -hmm. you have the legal option you can take to it. consent okay. or to not consent. The battery's not charged. I'll worry about that. That's not a big deal. Okay. If it's yours, we will get it back to you. Okay. His mom tried to take me from me. That's why I ended up in jail that one time okay. for no contact. Mm -hmm. Because he gave it to me and she took it and he told her to give it back to me that it's mine. Okay. Then we'll get back to you then when we're done with it. And, and remember, like we said at the beginning, you know, I mean, that's information that you're giving to them. If there's something on there that. There's no memory card, so don't think I'm trying to hide one or anything. We didn't have one before I went to jail. I don't think he bought one after because he never said anything. Okay. Well, there was, from the phone conversations, it was an obvious attempt to hide the camera, to get rid of the camera. He did not want us to have the camera. It appeared that you didn't want us to have the camera. So I don't um, care if you take it. It's well, I don't know that now. I'm just talking there. beforehand. You've seen everything that was on there anyways. Probably. <laughs> Except for the deer that's on there now. Okay. Have you ever seen any pictures on there 
when you got out of jail and you took the camera, did you ever see any pictures on there of Teresa? No. Any other pictures that I should know about that I can't think of what to ask? Just pictures of his family, Chucky, Chucky in his car, Marie and them, some thing I think at Barbara's. Okay. Bar or Bar. Jody, you talked about previously, um, I think we asked you about phone calls on October 31st, mm -hmm. and you said that you did call Stephen mm -hmm. that evening. I called him twice. Twice, okay. Did you notice a different demeanor in him that night? No, than you had I've recently? been sitting here since. I didn't notice anything. He didn't sound okay. strange, talk strange. But I'm trying to remember our conversations too, if it was good or if we were fighting. That I can't remember. Okay. I just. It, it, all I do remember is he didn't sound strange or anything. Okay. I'm going to elaborate a little. The reason I'm asking this question is not, not that he sounds strange or anything, how you two conversed. And, and what I'm getting at is we listened uh, to jail calls prior to that. It's real exciting stuff. I bet it is. And you guys essentially fought every, every freaking time you talked, except October 31st. Really? He was nice as could be to you. You don't recall that. No, I don't. Okay. Totally out of the ordinary. What, what, what we're yeah. listening to, do you agree that would be out of the ordinary if he was really yeah. nice to you? But you don't have no independent recollection. going on. Because when he slept with Marie, too, he was really nice to me. So that can, what well, you're telling us, that could be a... A clue or a sign as yeah. to maybe something's going on, yeah. something happened. Because I, 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 been trying to remember our conversation of that day. All I can remember is I talked to him twice, <clears throat> and he seemed fine. I guess you could say. I don't know. Mm -hmm. One of the things that he said on that conversation was that I have Brendan over here helping me clean up. When I talked to you the other week, you said that, you know, Brendan wouldn't come over a whole lot. You guys would take on the Walmart and stuff. Would that be out of the ordinary, Brendan over there helping him clean up or clean the house? No. That's something normal that would happen? If Brendan people help needed help, he'd call over there and ask one of the boys to come over and help. Okay. Speaking of Brendan... But I just, yeah, go ahead. Go, no, I, 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 it's, it's, I don't remember that phone conversation, so I don't remember him mm -hmm. telling me that he was there. Okay. Speaking of Brendan, you've had a lot of talks with Stephen since October 31st up until the gay order, or whatever you want to call it. Mm. Um, what does he say about Brendan? What does he say about this whole thing, about Brendan's involvement, uh, Brendan's arrest? I honestly can't answer that because I don't remember. Him. What do you say about it? Barb. Barb thinks it's bullshit. She thinks her son's innocent. We, we and I'm specifically thinking of one conversation where Stephen made a comment about uh, if he goes to prison or if he gets life, Brendan's getting life. Do you recall comments like that that he made? You know, if Brendan didn't do it, why would Brendan go to prison for life? Yeah. You don't recall that I, or, or comments like that? I'm sure he made them, but... No independent recollection. Just ignoring them. So you're, t you're sitting here today telling us that most of the conversations you had with him or had with him through Dolores, where she middled the, the calls. Um, we switched the phones around. Oh, okay. All that stuff. All right, when I was in jail? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I was yelling your at talk him about, about murdering her and he didn't answer me? That too, <laughs> but you're talking about your love for him and stuff. You're saying that was all bullshit now. Yeah. That you loved him and you wanted to be with him and you wanted to marry him. Mm -hmm. and I just want to get my stuff out of there and get the car that he said I could have and forget mm -hmm. about him. That mm -hmm. whole family is fucking nuts. 
Why did you go live with him then for live with Dolores and Al? And I had nowhere else to go. Would your mom take you? No. In? no. And I wouldn't put them through this. I had just seen my daughter for the first time in almost a year, and that's in a picture I just got for my birthday. Have you and Chucky ever done anything? Nope. Has he tried? Oh, yeah. Sexually, I mean, or yeah, coming oh, yeah. on to you, stuff oh, yeah. like that. But you've never done anything nope. with him? Never would. Think Chucky had anything to do with this? Truthfully, yeah, I do think so. Why do you think that? Well, when Stephen and I first started dating, Chucky wanted me. Mm -hmm. And I guess he found out Stephen and I got together, and he went home and started drinking or something, I don't know, because I was drinking then. And according to Brian, Barbara's oldest son, he came down shooting off his shotgun. We left, so I don't know what happened after that. Do you have any other information that he's involved in or just a feeling? Just a feeling. Because he's really weird. What do you think about Brendan? Do you think he's involved? think Stephen got him involved? Truthfully, I can't see Brendan doing it. But can you see Stephen being able to manipulate him into doing it? Not something that gross, no. It's hard to see be. You know, I'm assuming you know about all the evidence we have. You know that we've got a bullet fragment that we found in the garage. With her blood? With her DNA yeah. on it that came from that 22 rifle in his house. I heard that. You knew that? Okay. What does that tell you? I don't know. Think a cop went in there, grabbed that 22, and shot her to death? I don't know. And hung it back up? <laughs> so I don't know. All you right. know, I got my days when I we won't even convinced go there. that That's he fine. did it. And we won't go there. It's, Let me I ask you know. this. Those Laura and the girls from New York mm -hmm. seem to be really interested in you, interested in the case. What's their motive? What, what do they got going on here? Doing a documentary. we got one thing we want to read you here real quick. Um, you made a comment. You were talking, I think, to Ma. Dolores, and you made a comment that uh, Laura has a lot of good evidence for Stephen. A lot of good stuff for Stephen. The New York people have lots of evidence for Stephen. Mm -hmm. what, what do they have? I don't know. That's just what she told me. I didn't Who see told nothing. You that? Laura. But didn't she elaborate on, on what good evidence no, that she has? Because you made a I comment more than that time on there that they told you that they have evidence and they have a lot of evidence I several times. just gathered it was stuff that Dean was telling her. I never asked, you know. I'd... So she never told you no. what she had? No. Sorry. That's okay. Um, it's about time to go anyways. Yeah, I, I got to go. outside. I think I told Mark I got to be in uh, John Burke by three. I'm probably I there probably got like one quick question here. The cut on Steve's finger. Mm -hmm. When he visited you last time in the jail, did you see that cut? Mm -hmm. Okay. Did he have it bandaged up or what? I think he had it open so the air could get at it. Okay. But I know a couple times before that it was bandaged. What did he say about that? How did it happen? He cut it working on a car or doing something with the flap it, I don't remember. Do you remember what finger it was on? We're sitting in the car, it's right hand. And then real quick, you just got a couple pictures to show her. Yeah, but now you do that real quick. Oops, sorry. Did Steve ever own a Palm Pilot? I had a box like that, Palm 031. Not when I, before I went to jail. Would he know how to run it if he did have one? I'm asking. I... Your opinion? My opinion, no. So you've never seen a Palm Pilot in his house? No. Okay. Ever see that hammer before? It's a hammer, it's a hammer, it's a hammer probably, but... Familiar at all? Doesn't look familiar. Found that in Steve's house. Do you know what that refers to? 
It says 3302 no. Xander Road, and it's got a phone number on there. No, I didn't. never even heard of Xander Road. Okay. Canon, a picture of a Canon PowerShot A310. Did he ever have a camera like that? No, but that sort of looks like Barbara's camera. Do you know for sure if Barbara had one like that, or you just think you might have seen it? It looks like Barbara's. Okay. Any idea what that note meant? It says, back to patio door. Nope. Did you write that? No. <clears throat> There's a ring of keys with the fob on it that says 2003. Any idea who owns those keys? Did you ever see those before? No. Could have found them in a junk car. I don't know. I've never seen it. Okay. Picture of the bed here. It's kind of the bottom of the bed. Yep. So you're telling me the bed was over here underneath the windows? Under that window. Under this window here. It was yep. kind of turned that oh, way. It was, under the, it was under both of them. The headboard was here, and then the footboard was... So maybe it's a little better in this one. Like it would have been over here, right? Yep, the headboard was over here, and then the footboard was over okay. here. Um, there's a cabinet here. Do you remember that cabinet? Yeah. It was like kind of a bookcase type yeah. of thing. Do you ever store things in there, or I mean, hide things in there that you're aware of? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. And finally, Steve ever have, that, to your knowledge, a, a Motorola Razor cell phone? Not to my knowledge. Anyone from the Avery you guys family? Don't mind if I smoke this before I go to work there? No. Anyone it's from the family, the to your knowledge, have a phone like that? No. Okay. Was that it? That's it for me. Times 226. I think we'll go off the record then. Interview's concluded. Any questions?